Today I was the trauma attending, so that means I was working in the trauma room, seeing the sickest of the sick patients. Seeing the sickest of the sick patients. For those of you who follow him on Twitter, that's what Dr. Santiago said just a few days ago. So, it, it, Doc, give us a sense of how difficult it is for you every day, personally, and for your team at BMC. Well, there's an added stress level given that so much is just unknown about the virus right now and that things are evolving day. I mean, I started working seven weeks ago in the pandemic, and when I walked into the hospital, it was a different vibe. You know, maybe we weren't wearing all the PPE that we needed to wear. We didn't really understand how sick people could get. We didn't see young people who are relatively healthy get sick pretty quickly. And so that all changed in a couple of weeks. And fortunately, we've been able to set up the processes and the protocols in the hospital to address that, whether that's scaling up capacity in the hospital, making sure that we have the PPE that we need. Uh, but it's been hard. I mean, mm -hmm. when patients come in, they're scared on the worst day of their life. Um, you know, but that's what we're trained and to do. And I'm really honored, honored and privileged to be in that position. We've all been going through a very difficult period here, Dr. Santiago. So I want to end this interview with a little bit of optimistic news. What gives you hope? Well, I think there are a number of things throughout the day that give me hope. I mean, I see glimmers of hope with each shift I work in the emergency department and each time I talk to colleagues and constituents across the state. You know, I think about BMC and the fact that we've discharged 600 people um, over the course of the past couple of weeks and up to 35 a day. Um, you know, I see uh, glimmers of hope when I talk to my state house colleagues and the fact that, you know, although half the country isn't meeting, that we've been able to meet in informal sessions and to pass important pieces of legislation thanks to the leadership of people like, you know, Robert D'Elia. We've passed, you know, an eviction and a foreclosure moratorium, been able to appropriate funds to address the epidemic, really put in place data collection efforts to um, help us out when, you know, uh, as the virus kind of proceeds. And so I see glimmers of hope throughout this whole thing. And I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll be on the backside of this public health crisis. But make no mistake, the economic one from this is going to be a very difficult one. I mean, we're estimating about a 20% unemployment, $6 billion down compared to last fiscal year. So the challenge continues. But I think, um, you know, we've been through so much as a city and as a commonwealth, whether that's the Boston Marathon, um, the Great Recession. And we have leadership here in government and the House of Representatives um, to get the job done and to have us bounce back stronger than before. So, so doctor, as we say goodbye, it is Sunday morning. It's 11.14 in the morning. Are you going right to the emergency room now? Well, I was working there last night, so uh, I won't be working there. Um, but I'll be back tonight uh, in the emergency room. Um, so that's been my week and Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays in the emergency department. But I, listen, I, I would rather be in no place. You know, our community needs us to, to be there. And, you know, we're not healthcare. You know, people said, you know, there's healthcare heroes out there. I look at all the essential workers out there, the grocery workers, the parents homeschooling their kids. Um, there's so many heroes out there. And I mean, that's what gives me inspiration to keep, the, to keep doing what I'm doing. Dr. Santiago, thank you so much. Representative Santiago, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Be well, sir. You look great.